This is the Stormy Willow Podcast, a light-hearted, balanced examination of the paranormal. Howdy do, and thanks for joining our little brood. We're your hosts, Adele and Sarah, the Stormy Willow Podcast, where we bring you your astrological forecasts and booger news and a paranormal headline each week. That would be us, Adele and Brood. Hello, this is the last podcast of the year. Yeah. So, well, by the time you hear this, you'll be bringing it'll, the new year. It'll be a new year when you hear it's this. Yeah. Twenty-four. Yeah. I think we're, I, I mean, the vibe I'm getting is everybody's ready. Like, I think everybody, I don't know one person that's like, I'm really going to miss 2023. I think everybody's like, bye-bye. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> like, let's just like a Band-Aid onto the next. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's so funny, you know, I've been, you know, Facebooking and TikTok and doing all the things. And one of my friends posted the funniest meme. It was like my favorite part of 2023. And it was that fight with the boat. Oh, yeah. Like, that guy, like, you know, with the crocs all beat up. She's like, that was pretty much 2023 highlight for me. <laughs> <laughs> I already forgot about that. That's funny. I was like, yeah, I was like, I guess if you could wrap up 2023 <laughs> in the story, that might be the headline. I don't know. It fits. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks, I don't know. Like, I mean, of course, there are great things and things to be thankful for, but all in all, yeah, I'm ready for I mean, it's good. 2024 is going to be a doozy, guys, I'm sure. It's gonna, uh, yeah, it's I mean, election, speak- uh, election year, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah. Speaking of twenty twenty four, do you do you have any predictions, or have you heard any crazy buzz about people's expectations for twenty twenty four? You know, pretty much everybody I know is just trying to survive to live to fight another day. Pretty much, it's the it's the vibe I'm getting on the uh, the word on the street. You know, I think people just want some interest rates to go down and some affordable groceries and. And that's the wishes that I'm hearing and that I feel as well. So what about you? Any Anything? Aliens coming? I, I don't know. Like, I, I kind of, like, looked across, like, the internet and TikTok, like, from Nostradamus to just, you know, wow. psychics in their living room. And, you know, just kind of, like, what I'm observing, I kind of made five... 2024 Stormy Willow. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's dig in. Yes. All right. Well, I think this is actually already happening, but I didn't know it. (laughs) (laughs) So I said Matt Gates would have a scandal with an underage girl. And I think I'm hearing that already checked. That already happened. happened. Yeah. Prediction. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and claim that one, though. I'm going to say it's just going to be a deeper hole and more comfortable about that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, bye bye, idiot. Yeah. All right. So bye bye, Matt Gates in 2024. That's a good one. Um, this one's kind of out there, but okay. I'm gonna say Kanye West runs for president when Trump is blocked from running as the Republican. You know, Adele, I I don't think that that would be weird at, at where we are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That checks. Because right. you know, yeah. it couldn't be someone like Oprah. Or, you know. <laughs> Who's also, or, like, kind of falling apart lately, too. Like, it's just like... Or bad. John Stewart or somebody, you know. But yeah, Kanye. Or Bill yeah. Moore. Yeah, yeah, Kanye on the ballot. Kanye. Yeah. And uh, it I'm seeing happen. that. I'm seeing that happen. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of psychics, I think even, like, uh, famous ones, I think there's going to be, like, a really horrible U.S. tragedy like 9-11 scale oh really well i, hope I just sense it i just feel like it i don't know i hope not oh but... steven's here guy the breed <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Stephen, what do you 9-11 think? scale tragedies <laughs> any any predictions for 2024 Hello. all right we caught him off guard because he doesn't know he's getting this pillow in one lay down <laughs> <laughs> A nap. A nap is in 2024. Okay, uh, yeah, like, I I worry, um, especially with climate change, um, you know, weather tragedies, and also, um, you know, just with the state of the world, and especially with this election coming up, and how violent um, a lot of Trumpers are or can be, I, I 
Yeah, I don't want to say that that checks out, but I don't think I would be surprised, sadly enough. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't know. It could be climate. It could be terrorist. I have no idea. I just think it'll uh, be something that is that, like, t- like time-stoppingly horrible. Like, you'll know where you are when... Yeah, I think so. Maybe like, a nuke. I have no idea. I mean, I hate to say it, and this is... I'm so <laughs> sorry. This is... And I, I don't mean this heartless, but it's... It's gotten to where, like, you know, school shootings don't seem to shake us anymore. It's like, oh, there was, I mean, you know, so, I mean, it's just horrible, like, how, you know, people just don't care about human life and how, like, it's just become the norm. Like, oh, yeah. another shooting today, like, you know, stuff that would have completely shaken your world and should shake your world. But it's like, uh, yeah, I hope not. I hope that doesn't happen, but. I hope not either, but I, I don't know. I, I just know. feel like. Tensions are high, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think China will officially, like, take the center stage as, like, the leader of the world. Like, I I think they already are pretty much there, but I feel like America still has that kind of air about it. Like, we're still, like, you know, the end-all, be-all, like, lead. But I think China is going to step up and take center Uh stage uh, this year. And then last but not Everything's made there. I mean, right, they they have the money, they have the weapons, I just... Yeah. They just yeah. need to make it known, I guess. I don't know. I, I just think we'll see a lot more of China in the world this year. Um, and this is also another out there one, but um, I'm gonna say that we make contact with ETs using whale language that we have deciphered through artificial intelligence. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, you threw in some free willy there. I mean, I mean, yeah. hard to be contact, right? So I'm, I'm just hearing all this buzz about AI being applied to understanding the language of whales, and That's then they awesome. are actually considering maybe like maybe Why sending not? a whale message into space, see if something. Oh, that's maybe, some good news, man. Maybe we that's can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna say we're gonna make contact, and the whales will will do it to save the day. <laughs> I'm doing the free willy. I'm like, yes. I knew yeah. we needed to save the whales. Right. No, I can't. no that would be so amazing. I, so, that was a good one. I like that one. So now let me ask you this: um, Did these predictions come from The Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> no, because that, I'm not aware of the, any of them. That's where the fact checking needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of too afraid. Um, <laughs> if you haven't, we did a whole episode on the Simpsons <laughs> and their scary predictions. <laughs> I think there, I think there are some 2024 predictions from them, but uh, I'm too afraid to. Yeah, look. you're like I don't want to know the truth, really. <laughs> don't. Yeah. I, I know. It's weird. I mean, 2024. Like I was, um, you know, my dogs or my life and so they have to have some background noise sometimes while I'm working my other job and so we were watching some Sabrina the Teenage Witch today and I just I got so sad for the 90s do you ever do that like was there ever like a decade or something like you all like rude Adele that you're just like man it's just like I told Steven I'm like we will never be able to go out on a date like it's the 90s we just won't well, it's it's funny. I was talking to Amanda about about that, and kind of along the lines with AI. Like, I think AI is just going to be super household this year as well, like super normalized. Like, we'll use it like yeah. we do like Google. Like, it, it will just like be so that. second nature to us. Yeah. But I was like, I think it will be cool. I feel like it's the premise of one of those Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. But I was like, I feel like we're getting close to the technology with like all the virtual reality and stuff to where maybe you can vacation in different decades instead of places. Now that would be cool. Right. And then think about it though, because then like even places that you don't necessarily want to go to right now, you might want to go like back in a different era. Era. Yeah. Like you might want to come to America at a different time. (laughs) Yeah. Like (laughs) like, like, here in a different era. (laughs) Wouldn't it be cool if you could go to like 1994 Myrtle Beach? Yes. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> and you like, have to your couch like i don't know i don't know how would that but, work like i don't know like i don't know maybe you could cool. go to like those vr like places where they have you know like you're walking on the treadmill like you yeah. know or if you oh, have one of those rigs i don't know i'm thinking it'd be, be like cool. that kind of setup 
I mean, it's just, I don't know, just everything about it. I just like, you know, like the silk shirts, just like little things. I'm like, oh, like come on to like a dance or I don't know, like the slicery, whatever. It's just like, just like uh, I was speaking of nostalgia, uh, this guy does this TikTok about Book It and how, like, you know, it got us to read and oh, stuff. Yeah. And he's like, Pizza Hut was the place that like, you'd go there for your anniversary. Your baseball team would go there. He's like, it was fine dining. <laughs> It was great. <laughs> it's like he's like it was just a hodgepodge of whatever. Like you were at Pizza Hut, like, and he was like, "You damn near need to make a reservation on a weekend." <laughs> you would like, be waiting. Get in. If you yeah. just, I'm the one in Rock Kill, like you'd be waiting out the door, like on a Friday, Saturday night. Like mm -hmm. you'd be waiting. Mom would always give us uh, money for the jukebox. Yeah, okay. and they had those Fine. few video games, like the games, like four video games. It's the shit. Yeah. You have, like wait your turn. <laughs> Like, it was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe 2024 will feel like 1994 or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, like, all the internet and shit will go out and it will be, like, the 90s again. Yeah. You'll just I know. have to, so like, funny, go like, and listen to the same stuff at the same place. <laughs> Sabrina was trying together. to uh, get a job babysitting and they had, like, the pay phones in school so she can make a call. I'm like, yeah, that's what we used to do. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to do. Uh, well, those are some scary predictions, Adele, and one cool one. I say. <laughs> well, maybe two cool ones. But <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Let us know your kooky predictions for 2024. Yeah, let us know. We want to know what you think is <clears throat> happening, going to happen, so we can be ready. Or not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's any getting ready anymore. <laughs> uh, it's just a constant state of prepping. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but um yeah let's hear some booger news huh let's do it all right this poor lady this out on a good one <laughs> this lady all right this happened in 2012 but still it's new to us okay all right woman donates kidney to her boss gets fired <laughs> no <laughs> all right let's oh. just crack into it this is um oddityscentral.com and here's the story of this lady who donates her kidney and still gets fired. Oh, oh man. Debbie, 47 year old oh, Debbie. Debbie Stevens, a divorced mother of two from Long Island, donated her kidney to help out her boss. You'd think the least she could receive in return was some gratitude, but instead she was promptly fired. The behavior of the boss in question truly seemed unfathomable. Stevens now contends. <laughs> That she was being set up and used by her 61-year-old boss, Jackie Brucio. Mm, I, I feel like some... Do you remember that show, Jersey Licious? No. I feel like some of that is going to about to go down. Like, where they're, they're working like a Jersey hair salon. And like, they start fighting and stuff. Like, that's what I feel. Like, the energy there. Okay. Well, that's this was like that. It was 2012. It was like... That Jersey yeah. Shore, like kind of time That's period. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm seeing some like hair pieces getting pulled in a minute. Oh, well, let's see. <laughs> um, Steven and Brucio met as co-workers at the billion dollar Atlantic Automotive Group. At the time, Stevens was a clerical worker while Brucio was one of the company's controllers. Later, Stevens left the company in June 2010 and moved to Florida. But she happened to meet Brucio again in a visit to Long Island. It was mm -hmm. then that she came to know Brucio's illness and difficulty in finding a kidney donor. As a naturally generous person, in quotes, Stevens offered to donate her own kidney if the need arose. To which Brucio replied, You never know, I may have to take you up on that offer. Ah, uh, hmm. A few months later, Stevens moved back to Long Island and asked Brucio if she could have her old job back. Within a few weeks, she was rehired, this time to work under Brucio. After two months, in January 2011, Brucio called Stevens into her office and asked her if the offer for the kidney was still good. That's freaking awkward. <laughs> uh, Stevens is still willing to go ahead with it. Uh, quote, uh, she was my boss. I respected her. It's just who I am. I didn't want her to die. <laughs> Stevens later told the media. <laughs> but she now realized that Brucia had only been, quote, grooming her to be her backup plan. 
Stevens wasn't um, a close match for Brucia. Uh, so she instead donated her kidney to someone else so that Brucia w- would be moved up to th- on the waiting list. Ah. Oh. Jeez. Eventually, Stevens' kidney went to someone in St. Louis while Brucia got hers from San Francisco. Uh, after the procedure, Stevens experienced serious pain. Discomfort in her legs and digestive problems. However, she was pressured to return to work just three weeks after surgery. Oh, wow. That's not very long. Uh, when she she finally went back to work on September 6, 2011, she didn't feel ready. Uh, even her boss was still recovering at home. <laughs> okay, so... Okay. <laughs> Three days later, she was so sick that she had to return home. She then received a berating call from Brucia. Her words apparently were, quote, you can't come and go as you please. <laughs> people, people are going to think you're getting special treatment. Even after Brucia returned to work, Stevens got yelled at in front of co-workers all the time when she went to visit a psychiatrist yeah. and had her lawyer send a letter to the employers. Stevens was quickly fired. Uh, Steven's lawyer now plans to file a discrimination lawsuit against the company. Rusia turns on her and she should have been kissing her feet, one of the lawyers said. In spite of the bitter experience, Steven does not regret uh, what she's done. Quote, I have no regrets I donated a kidney because it saved the life of a man in Missouri. And that's it. Um, I feel like that's going to settle. That's... I would hope it did. I mean, that's weird. That is someone not understanding the power of saying no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad the guy in Missouri got a kidney, but damn, I really don't think she wanted to do any of this. No. But then, like, you know, it kind of goes back to the being afraid to say no because, like, she's a single mom, too, right? So, like, that pressure of I can't lose my job, how am I going to support my family? Like, you know, like, I, which is a whole nother bucket of just bullshit. Like, yeah. Oh my God. That's odd, though. Like, she moved all the way to Florida. And they came back. Yeah. I would like to hear all, I would like to hear our other side of that story. Yeah. But that, that that's, well, yeah. I mean, it's still, like, not a great, great look, but I'm just like, well, uh, I don't know. I would love to hear a follow up if there's like a silver lining on the road for this lady. But yeah, that's I don't know. Pretty crazy. Sometimes it seems like good deeds don't always. It seems like good deeds do go punished. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yay that you know someone has her kidney and is, is hopefully doing well. But man, hopefully she's at a better place now. Better job. Yeah. And where nobody's asking for, you know, organ donations, which I just feel like you shouldn't be asking that either in that kind of situation. That's like a whole client. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm your boss or work with you, like, I, I can just see think across some lines. Yeah. It sounds like all around and across the board boundary problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. Which takes us into our forecast. <laughs> oh, great can't wait for this yeah so this is the astrological forecast for this coming week of january 1st this is Um, the first forecast of the year guys and it sounds like it's gonna be a doozy uh, it actually doesn't sound so bad good well at least we've got retrograde moving out we do so this is compliments of women's health magazine all right um and just kind of if you remember looking back in 2023 boundaries <laughs> were a big thing especially yeah. towards the end of the year kind of setting boundaries and and maybe even kicking people to the curb that you yeah. know aren't really but i think uh was our scorpios had some big stuff in this area for sure i remember yeah so you're still you know in the process of working on those boundaries that you've set anew and you're still in the process of maybe letting some people go so mm-hmm. you know that's going to be things you continue bye 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 um, and this is all about figuring out what you really want was what 23 was about. All right. So now looking ahead into 2024, um, this is going to be a journey of personal fulfillment 
And this will continue up through 2025. This work All we're right. Doing. All right. So this is kind of like the time when you're just finding like a whole new paradigm. Um, oh like just, you know, this whole shift in, in making what you want to come true. You're like all in for yourself. Um, and yes, finally Mercury retrograde is over. That ends on January 1st. So pretty powerful day bringing in the very first with a direct Mercury. It's it almost like a weight's lifted immediately. Just like, okay, you do understand yes. the words are coming out of my mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And with that clarity from Mercury being direct, now that's great actual time to plan your 2024 goals on the first awesome. to kind of awesome. kick it off. And, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like me personally, like I've been having a really hard time setting goals this for 2024. Um, and that's usually not a problem for me, but then maybe it's just, I just been too blocked. I'm like, I don't really know what I want to achieve. Um, and so maybe I'll, I'll be clear, yeah. a little more clear on the first. Mine has been definitely more of what I want to chuck out of my life to free me up to do what, what I want. want. To do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I definitely am relating to a lot of this. Um, that's really it, astrological-wise, until the 11th. Okay. Uh, January 11th, we'll have the new moon in Capricorn. And that is going to be one of the luckiest new moons of the new year. Um, I'll definitely be getting a lottery ticket that day. I yeah, <laughs> I love some, and I just love some Capricorns. I don't know a lot of Capricorns, but the two I do know are really cool. yeah. I don't Capricorn have a lot of Capricorns either. I feel like Capricorns, um, like, they own the shit. Like, yeah. You know, they're, like, very... They get it done. They're good leaders. Yeah. Like. Um, And this, this kind of naturally ties into them with, like, long-term planning as well during this time. Yeah. So it's, it's really around, like, goals, goals, goals. Like, what are you wanting to do now? A little bit later, plan it all. Go go all in with what your personal fulfillment looks like, I and plan that. that out. Um, and think about how your new year re New Year's resolutions are also going to tie into all these goals. How are they going to serve you to accomplish your big goals? How are all these small goals going to tie up to your big goals? So you're going to be like on fire with like organizing, like ladder goals. Ooh. This is time to plan it and do it. I love it. Plant those seeds. And the biggest thing is be firm and be ambitious. Firm and ambitious. So Got that's this. how to kick off 24. I like it. That's awesome. I think we're all ready for a clean slate. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so amazing. Yeah, not a bad forecast. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, I could, it. I could, I could definitely relate to all that. So Yeah, same. <laughs> I love it. That is awesome. Well, thank you, Adele. Yeah, thank you, Women's Health. Yeah, thank you, Women's Health. Um, so speaking of women, uh, I have such a lovely story today about one of my favorite topics, ghosts. But it's super short, but it's so sweet to send out the new year. Um, so this is the legend of Hugging Molly. Have you ever That's heard of this one? I've so never heard sweet. it. So this is the ghost of Alabama. Oh, I was waiting. <laughs> yeah, you're, I know. Well, it's so funny because when I was looking for ghosts, like, just, like, her name kind of caught my eye. And then I was like, oh, Alabama. Okay. And I just really liked it. So, uh, just a quick shout out to my sources. Um, everything Unexplained. Uh, go, I'm sorry, paranormalcatalog.net and Hug and Molly. There's uh, actually just a paranormal site just about Hug and Molly. So, Let's let's start here in Abbeville, Alabama. It's this small, little charming southern town, um, but it's home of the legend Hug and Molly. And the tale goes that um, you know Hug and Molly is like apparently like if you go to Abbeville, like, they even have like a diner like named Hug and Molly. Like she's a she's a big deal in this town okay. and she's definitely one that people tell stories about or they hear about like when they go to scout camp and they you like if you're from this town you grow up knowing who hugging molly is so let's get into it so here is molly's origin story 
So um, around the 19th century, um, in the small town of Abbeville, Alabama, the legend goes that Molly was a deep, deeply troubled woman, aren't we all? Um, <laughs> and so she met a tragic end, and there are a few variations of the story, but nobody knows for sure. So one part of the story says that she lost her child in a tragic accident. And some say that it was more sinister and speculate that um, she is basically a mother in mourning and she blames the town people for her demise. Mm -hmm. Now, regardless, um, her spirit certainly has not found peace because her spirit is very famous in this town and very many people say that they have experienced hugging Molly. And so she's basically this phantom woman who is seven feet tall so, and she please. she appears in all black and she will just appear out of nowhere at night and she's done to hug children okay <laughs> and so some people that aren't like children have also experienced this but so why did you put so why did you say children in quotation marks well like like some like college age kids have also experienced oh it. youngsters so, youngsters so like some okay. have been little but some have been like you know i wouldn't call them children but you know young okay. young young adults yeah. okay i gotcha and so um <laughs> i didn't i was like, like what? children yeah <laughs> it's like what like short people <laughs> <laughs> i i would definitely be getting a hug i, I would love it um, she never harms the children um like no one's ever said like she's caused harm but they do a, a lot of people that have had experiences with her say that you will hear like this ringing in your ear that's absolutely like terrifying hmm. so okay yeah. yeah so let's talk about some of the encounters with her so the first encounter was they say around 1901 like when the story kind of started um and basically a teenager was walking home one day after work or after i guess like their part-time job or whatever and you know like that feeling like oh my god i feel like somebody's like following me but like you look around and you don't see anything it was kind of like that situation mm -hmm. and so when he turned to see who it was he couldn't see anything and then he kind of kept looking back and then he just saw like this tall black robe figure in the darkness now, I also remember you're in Alabama, so that could be scary, depending on yeah things. So, I'm just saying that could be some cause for that our could concern. Be, yeah. Um, and so, basically, the kid just, like, sped up just to, like, try to run, like, to get the hell away from this apparition. And when, as the kid started running, like, you know, just, it, like, you know, the figure kept up with his pace. And so um, he um, just ran home as fast as he could, sprinted up the steps, and opened the door and went inside. And so he ran that, all the way home. Yeah, and like saw from her, his like, job. <laughs> walk by. Well, he was already walking home from his job. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, like, he was leaving work and going home, and felt that, and that happened. And he said that he like saw her like walk by, but she didn't get him. She wasn't able to get a squeeze. Hmm. Okay. So, all right, one resident recounted a chilly tale of walking home late one evening and felt a cold gust of wind and a pair of invisible hands embracing her. Where? <laughs> so, it doesn't say. Uh, shoulders. The resident described a deep guttural laughter as she felt the breath of Molly on her neck. And then the encounter was over so quickly, she said that she was just left trembling in fear. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like that. Now, this would be where what you and I would be up to. Uh, so, a group of teens decided, hey, let's go out and try to find Molly. Right? Like we would. We would and right. so, they're like, okay, there's this abandoned schoolhouse that was rumored to be Molly's former residence, even though there's absolutely not proof of it but like let's go to the schoolhouse you know see if we can see molly so as the kids were exploring the halls they heard whispers and then footsteps echoing through the halls and then they said that the air turned icy 
and they could see a silhouette of a woman emerging from the shadows, gradually growing in size. And the kids um, fled and said that they would never talk about the incident again. So, okay. the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So some people want to know, like, was Molly real? Like, yeah. Who, who, like, what, who is what she hell? really? Right. And so there are different accounts of hugging Molly. And so when she was alive and why her ghost haunts the streets of Abbeville or kind of people have different variations of it. Some versions, they say, like I said, that she had lost, we talked about earlier, she had, tried, you know, lost a child. And so she basically just tries to hug children to be near them, so whatever. This is pretty much like white trash La Llorona. <laughs> like the uh, wailing women, right? Well, it <laughs> like depends on what version. Her child. It depends on what version you believe. Apparently, like some say that her grief of losing a child like made her mad, like drove her insane. And as a result, she in life wandered the streets at night seeking out local children to hug as a way to cope with her own child's death. Some variations say no, that did not happen. They think that um, Molly was a woman who was brutally murdered on the very streets of Abbeville that she now haunts. And some say that she is seeking to fulfill something unfinished or seeking justice for her own death. Perhaps she was killed in the darkness of night and no one was there to protect her. And so now she's looking to protect others from that same fate. Hmm. And then some say that Molly was actually a former professor and used to um what she used to do um she taught at the alabama agricultural school and so she would actually go out at night to scare kids to keep them safe i like that one i do too i do too um and there's also another variation that molly really wasn't a ghost at all but rather someone intentionally dressing up at night to hug children and scare them in darkness <laughs> That it just continues. <laughs> That's more what I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe combine that one with it's the professor under there. Yeah, like so that is that is the story of Huck and Molly. But this town really does look so fun. Um, the first thing that comes up is uh, this restaurant called Hug and Molly. And they look like they have some really good onion rings at this place. <laughs> That's some really good food. It looks amazing. Um, but it's neat because they say that, you know, Hug and Molly has really like brought a lot of tourists to their town. And so they really embrace it, like, you know, with the restaurant and just the different knickknacks and ghost tours the town really loves and uh, really embraces, no matter what variation of the story that you believe. But I'm like, yeah, I'm like, if I'm if I'm ever going through Alabama, I might consider stopping there and get me some onion rings and going on a ghost tour. Like, I think that sounds really fun. Yeah. Uh, what area is it? Like near Florida or uh, on the other side? You no, know, I don't know. I really don't know. Let's see. Um, but it looks so cute. I mean, anywhere in the South always has good food. <laughs> I'm sure there's well, really good yeah, food Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. But there was no actual Molly that maybe died around that time in that place. They, they, mm. It's just like a completely made up. I, I think it's just yeah. somebody. I think it's somebody too. So it is... Um, so it's about six hours. Let's see. It's 445 miles from Alabama. It's between Mississippi and Florida. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and like Louisiana is on one side and South Carolina is on the other. So, I mean, it could be like, you know, we go take a road trip to see dad. It's money rings. rings. It's money rings. Like, I'm Bug always. Molly. I mean, onion me onion rings and a hug from a ghost. Yes, yes. yes. That'll be the true test. Are we young enough for her to hug us? Abby, we might need you. <laughs> yeah, I we need some bait. <laughs> we need some bait. <laughs> I think we're too old. <laughs> like, they can fend for themselves. <laughs> I'm not hugging those grown ass people. No, it's creepy. No. Yeah. I'm here to protect the children, obviously. <laughs>
<laughs> I, mean, I just thought it was a really cute story, you know, a good one to send out the year in something short and sweet. And, you know, I, I just finished reading Holly um, by Stephen King. And it was, I'm like, okay, I need something that's <laughs> not that's too so heavy. You know? Not so happy. <laughs> it's so it, it was a great book, but it was intense about you know murder and stuff. And I'm like, uh, I need a nice ghost. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, Molly, like Molly, Molly's out there doing the work. Me. I mean, Molly is out there doing the work, people. She's keeping the streets safe. She's keeping and, uh, in line. She's keeping tourism alive. Like I just, uh, those are my favorite things about towns. It's like their story and I love it when a town has a town ghost like that's my favorite I wish we had a town ghost but we don't no we don't I mean I, I really wish we did but maybe I could be like a Molly or do one something of these days <laughs> and just get it going you know <laughs> what can I do hmm the ghost of Rock Hill <laughs> yeah I gotta think of something <laughs> get the legend going yeah we'll do something with straight dogs <laughs> Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. She makes cars wreck so that stray dogs don't get hit. <laughs> yeah, something, something crazy. Yeah, but, yeah I think that would be amazing. But that is a short, sweet little tale of Hug and Molly. Like I, I like to think that Molly's out there just trying to keep keep the kids safe, keep the streets, get them off the streets. Hugs, not drugs, is what Molly that, has to that's say. That's exactly what it is. Hugs, not drugs. She's just <laughs> doing the work, and she is. I wanted to uh, salute her for that. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Molly, for putting your town on the map as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, I'd rather go there than Disney. Seriously. <laughs> um, shall we see what next week's yeah. topic will be? First topic of 2024. Ooh, and look at this beautiful wheel. Whoa, well, look, there's the Stormy Willow logo in the center. This is nice. Yeah, let's see. Yo, I'm impressed. Uh oh. Uh oh. It was supposed to be all serious in this new year. <gasps> it looks like it's going to be up to you, my friends. A presenter's choice. Okay. Always a good one. Next time. Yes. All right. I well, I will pick choice. something amazing for. Uh, oh, we know you will. <laughs> for we our first will. recording of the new year. And I'm wondering if anybody listened to last week's episode about the mystery letters and what what you think. I haven't seen any um, any theories out there. So if you are off some this weekend, listen to Adele's episode and let us know um, who you think the culprit is. Yeah. It's a good I'm one. dying to hear what mom thinks. I know. I don't think mom's had a chance to listen yet, but I, I want to do an interview with her. Have her. She's probably she's probably mapping it all out right now. Like I need, a, I need some time. So she's just like, I theory. just had to hang on, girls. I just had to seal up this evidence to send to <laughs> Circleville Police. Yeah. She's like, I had to just mail this off real quick. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is Sandy, and if any of the breed know her, they know that we are not exaggerating. Yeah, Mom, it's on the so. case. And I think yeah. if mom, like, if she comes back as a ghost, I think she would be like a hugging Molly. For sure. Hugging Sandy. <laughs> hugging Sandy. Out there hugging children. They're doing, like, bad stuff, like drugs and stuff. She's like, no child. No yeah. child, no. <laughs> let, me get, let me hold you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Adele, um, are you doing anything fun for New Year's Eve? No. Me either. It's I'm hard at to that stay age. up to midnight. Like. I'm at that age now. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna count it down like the kids do. They do like noon. I'm like that sounds great. Like let's do that. <laughs> I'll do. Uh, I'll do East Coast time. It'll be ten yeah. o'clock for me. Yeah, you could do East Coast time. That's right. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait until it's midnight my time. I, you know, there was a time when Stephen and I would go out and do the things, but now we're like, we're just gonna sit on the couch. Really, like it's just not. I'm past that prime, I guess. Like, it's just like, hey, I, yeah. right? It's like, I don't <laughs> want to go to a ball or something really fancy. I feel like that's all you can do if you do go out. It's like you either go to a house party kind of situation. Yeah. Or like yeah. a gathering. Or go to like a nice, like, where it's like really nice. It's like, like so expensive. Can't there just be something more casual than that? Yeah. Like during the day. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, I agree. There's I agree. probably like some sort of a dinner. <laughs> like, eh, I know. Like we always start dinner. We always start with the rock and New Year's Eve. I'm like I don't know any of like the people anymore, so I'm not cool. And I'm like fall asleep usually about nine. <laughs> no, we don't watch any of that. We'll probably yeah. just watch movies that are like about winter time and like yeah. I don't know, like cold months. I have no idea. Or maybe <sighs> like we'll just watch Beetlejuice or something. That's always a classic. I um, was listening to my Spotify today, like my my rewind of like you know my year. And it's like your most favorite hit. So it was Beetlejuice. <laughs> okay, I believe it. And like all these Halloween songs. So I'm like, oh, that checks. <laughs> that data is accurate. Good job, Spotify. <laughs> yeah, I keep even like Google, it's all like, uh, you know, top 10 movies, uh, top 10 horror movies of 2023. I'm like, Okay, yeah. Sure, I'll yeah. look at the list. But I'm like, how do you get you guys how like you know? shoving they're all this so horror accurate. at me all the time? Yeah. <laughs> that was they know. Like if there's they know. Just, mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. Like those Rocky Horror Picture Show, Beetlejuice. Like I listen to that shit a lot this year. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> a whole the whole year. This was my biggest place. <laughs> like, you know. So Let's like I think Amanda I listen to Ghostbusters a lot. Yeah, like I don't know. We were listening to like stuff from like ten years ago, like the like the twenty tens, and we were like everything was so light and happy. How? Yeah. What the fuck happened just over the last decade? A lot, a lot. <laughs> we I don't believe that we've even began to heal or process. No. We will. We're gonna be like those children that's just like just tuck this last decade away, just tuck it down deep. And it just, just didn't happen. They just don't exist. Happen. What do you mean COVID happened? What? What? It did. I'm pretty sure it did. <laughs> no, it goes from 2015 to 2025. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like those yeah. years between that didn't exist. <laughs> Feels, it, it certainly feels like it. <laughs> it's a sad thing. Yeah, I'll be okay if that's what happens. We just block fine. them out. That's fine. Whatever. Oh, well, Brood, thanks for hanging in there with us this year. We've got some really exciting stuff coming up in the new year, hopefully. Um, so maybe we can get on an investigation or something fun. Yeah. That would be amazing. See how yeah. our wild predictions turn out for the year. That's right. That's right. And we just want to thank you for your support and for listening to us. And as we say, say here on our podcast, stay safe out there, friends. Stay curious. Never trust the living. living. Bye, you guys. Happy New Year. Later, taters.